And then today is the week four, and I say follow the Holy Spirit. Okay? So when <coughs> a bunch of fishermen met Jesus, and Jesus said to that, uh, uh, those fishermen, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Okay? And uh, 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 there's a little bit of pun there. There's a, a fisherman. What's their job? They, every day, they get out there, catch fish. And I believe they use the net, throw the net, and catch fish, and they go out to the market and sell it, all right? And then Jesus met them, you know, uh, Peter and his brother Andrew, you know, were fishermen, and Jesus said, you've been catching fish, but from now on, I will make you a fishers of men, so you will catch fish. I mean, you will catch men. It's, uh, you will harvest those people who are not saved into the boat of salvation, okay? So, how many of you like fishing? Well, I'm, I'm one of them, you know, yes, yeah, don't be shy, New Zealand is a great fishing country, you know, so, anyway, well, um, what would you say that each cast, you know, casting the, uh, with either net or each cast of a uh, fishing line, if each cast is a catch, what would you call it? Incredible. That is, that is the best fishing that you can, you can think of. Each cast and you catch fish. That's great. But in reality, does it happen that way, fishing? No. What happened? Sometimes you put the juiciest and nicest and the most presentable, you know, bait, whatever your favorite kind, whether it's a squid or pilchard, and uh, you just you know, hook them well and even put an elastic band and whatever your secret tricks and so on, you cast into the best possible location and you wait and wait and uh, you thought, you, you know, a fish is biting, you pull it out and nothing, you know, you know that sneaky fish took the baits only and uh, it's nothing there, you know. So, yeah, that's the reality of a uh, uh, fishing. But same thing that uh, sharing the gospel also, that you share the, in the best way possible. You've been behaving well. You've been buying him some lunch. And uh, I don't know, just uh, being nice to best possible kind of neighbor you can be. And, uh, you know, one day, you know, you just share the message of gospel. And uh, such a cold response. Don't talk to me about Jesus. I had enough. You know, I know what you're going to say and all those things. And so you realize, and hey, I tried to cast the, uh, the line, and I did. And... Uh, they didn't take it, okay? Anyway, well, so that's the reality of sharing gospel. Don't get discouraged just because your first, you know, casting of the a bait or casting of the net didn't produce any uh, uh, salvation, okay? Because, in fact, we need to understand the very important aspect of salvation, okay? And that is the, uh, this, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 3. This is the dialect between Jesus and Nicodemus. And uh, uh, verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, this is Nicodemus, you know, he was uh, uh, it, uh, just uh, one of the leaders in the community. And he came at night because he had this uh, 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 desire in his heart to know how can he enter into the kingdom of God? But he didn't say those words. But Jesus already knew. And most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So, okay, that's, that's different. You know, so Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? See that what Jesus was saying, you got to be born again. It is in the realm of spiritual world and the meaning of spiritual implication. And yet this uh, Nicodemus take it literally and saying, Hey, I'm already old. My mom's you know, like a grandma sort of thing, and how can I be born again? 
you know, how can I, it's just, if you think about it, how, how dumb that uh, the answer that Nicodemus, you know, bringing back. So Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and uh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh, did you see that spirit as a one with the capital S and the uh, other one it's a, uh, a, s a small s? You know, uh, whenever you see in the Bible the capital S, that sp spirit is the uh, indicating Holy Spirit. Okay, so unless the uh, someone is born of water and the, the spirit, so there are many people speculating what does that mean of water represents. Some people think that it's the water as the uh, you know, water in the pregnant woman. So that shows that uh, you're born out of the water, literally. So that's the f uh, uh, fleshly, uh, uh, like, um, uh, uh, being born, you know. And some people think that, you know, water represents the baptism, okay. And, uh, but I think, you know, most uh, uh, closest one, that water that represents, I think, it is the uh, baptism of John the Baptist. Remember John the Baptist? He was just uh, uh, ministering well, just before Jesus appeared to the uh, public. And John the Baptist, what was his message? John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And uh, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God while you are still remain as a sinner in the sight of God. Okay? And nobody can save themselves. You need to repent. And he indicated all these political leaders and military leaders and uh, all sorts of peoples and everyday people because there's a not even a single one is righteous in the sight of God. So the, uh, the message of John the Baptist is repentance. Repent. Kingdom of God is near, which imply that uh, if you have issue of sin, if there's an uh, issue of unrighteousness in your life, can you enter into the kingdom of God? I can tell you, you cannot. Kingdom of God, which has been prophesied in the uh, Old Testament Bible and throughout the whole Bible, it is one of the key themes of the entire Bible, which is the kingdom of God. But simply saying that uh, who can enter into the kingdom of God where God uh, uh, fully rule and reign? Only the righteous one. So, how do we fix that problem? Everybody's a sinner. Then how can anyone dare to enter into the kingdom of God? First line of business is that you have to admit that there's so much of evil and unrighteousness in your life. So you have to repent of your sin. And that is, I think I shared this last uh, Sunday also. You know, uh, in these days that our presentation of uh, in a way selling gospel is that um, without mentioning too much of the importance of sin and the repentance okay oh you know you can believe in Jesus he will, he will give you wealth and he will give you health and he will give you success and whatever the desires whatever the carnal desires of your heart he will like a genie in the bottle he will give you whatever you desire whatever you pray no I'm not saying that the, you know, people are praying, uh, uh, preaching that way, but in subtle ways that we diminish, we undermine the uh, 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 power and its consequence of the sin. So anyway, both Jesus and uh, John the Baptist, when they talk about the kingdom of God, what was the one simple clear message is, repent for the kingdom of God is near. It's not quite yet, but it is so close and what's the best preparation for us to face the kingdom of God is repentance. No matter how you may feel in your heart, and I'm so righteous, I don't drink and I don't do this and I don't do that, I don't do drugs and I don't do this and I, I do all these right things and I give tithes and I go to church, never fail, and I do this and I, wow, you know, uh, I'm all good. No, still you got to search in your heart repent 
when there is a sense that, that this is the spiritual deception some people you may get into if you somehow sense that in your p- a time of worship and prayer if you think that oh I'm so good with God I cannot really think of anything to repent of you know what that is the moment of danger the mess- message is very clear kingdom of God is very clear and it is so near to us you need to prepare yourself with repentance and I'll say the same thing you got to repent anyway this I believe it is the uh, repentance message of John the Baptist and the spirit and uh, which is the Holy Spirit and uh, you got to repent but the other thing is that the, how can anyone confess that Jesus is the Lord how can anyone have the sense of conviction and uh, a confirmation that actually now I believe that Jesus is the only way to the Father in heaven. Jesus is the only master and the Lord of my life. It won't happen by the man's persuasion. It won't happen by someone's clever philosophical and theological debate. It is only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, how many of you have this sort of a a, a moment that you had a long conversation with your friend or someone try to convince them you got to believe in Jesus Jesus is the only way you know this is God's good news to the fallen mankind you may use the Bible you may use your own you know apologetic sort of uh, all the skills and so on and at the end you thought oh this is going so well I am presenting so good yeah I don't know whether Apostle Paul can do better than what I just did but at the end, the uh, friend says, ah, ah, that's what you believe. No thank you for me. And uh, it's like, what happened? I did my best work to present the message of gospel, but the person, nah, turning it down. You see, it is not about just flesh and blood. It is not about human philosophies or even the uh, Bible uh, doctrinal presentation and so on. It has to be the work of the Holy Spirit, touch of God. So then there's a repentance of that person convicted of, uh, convicted of their own sin and the work of the Holy Spirit giving them faith that the Jesus is the Lord. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can confess that Jesus is their Lord. Amen? It is no accident if you can search it in your heart that it, I come to the conclusion Jesus is the one and only true Savior of my soul. He is not just rabbi. He is great Lord, my Savior. He is my King. If you can honestly confess that in your heart Jesus is the Lord, it is not the work of human uh, a fleshly activity it is the work of the Holy Spirit amen the moment when you are convinced and ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life and it is the work of the Holy Spirit and there's uh, <coughs> uh, verse 8 the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it uh, goes So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, are you with me? And there's a little bit of pun there that uh, uh, when this word wind, in Greek word wind, is same as the Spirit. So the Spirit of God, the, the activity of the Spirit, it is very similar like the activity of the wind, you know? Wind blows as if it has its own mind. It goes whatever the direction. You know, uh, in New Zealand, you know, we are very familiar with the activity of the wind. You know, weather forecast says uh, it's going to be westerly. And then, you know, I'm st- you know, especially after we install the, you know, roof or roof thing, you know, when there's a strong wind comes. And I come right here and sitting there, and uh, is that strong enough? And uh, how is it going? And so on. There's a little bit of shakes and so on. But they said they said it's going to be the westerly wind. No, when you're actually standing there, I know where's the north, I know where's the east. The wind goes blows from every direction, yeah? and just like that, the, s- 
we cannot really see, we cannot actually tell what's the activity in the spirit of, spiritual realm. How many of you can see and tell exactly what, is the, what the spirit of the, Lord, of, of the Lord is up to each moment in time? I'm a pastor, I've been in the ministry many, many years, but I just don't know how his mind and what is working. Only thing I, that I know is the effect of the spirit. What is the effect of the wind? You know, I have a camera, you know, just a security camera, you know, showing outside sort of things are from my home and uh, wherever the internet is connected, I just look at it when the wind goes crazy, you know, especially the, uh, the camera that shows the outside of the deck and I check the, uh, the roof or roof, sort of, uh, 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 the, what is that, the post and so on. Is it any movement, you know? So, and I check the, uh, uh, the, the flex and all these, uh, uh, the trees and so on. You can tell, you know, how much of movement is happening. You know, you don't have to get out there. You can actually see. You can hear the sound of the wind. And uh, we can only know. How do we know the activity of the Holy Spirit? We only know that it affects when we see some of the people. I can tell somebody who's been touched by the Spirit of the Lord. They somehow look different. The way they worship the Lord changed. The way they, you know, pray change the way they behave and even the way they you know interact with the pasta you know so it's like uh, when somebody's you know i have uh, i don't know any idea of their lifestyle and so on but uh, when they are not doing well one of the first thing that i notice over the years is that, that they avoid eye contact with the pasta <laughs> i don't know why but it is a quite quite accurate measure you know <laughs> just that they just feel guilty or whatever you know just especially during the time of you know a sermon and so on and you just sense the, uh, the, the effects you know or the lack of it but when there's a activity of the spirit of the Lord and we can see the changed life and uh, how do we know that someone is really been born again okay it is the receiving of the message of gospel and uh, uh, fully uh, acknowledge the work of Jesus in their life with the confession of their uh, uh, lifestyle which uh, acknowledge the lordship of Christ. Okay? And, uh, and you would think that uh, is sharing the gospel is a good, good idea? If you can think of who would be the most equipped to share the message of gospel and the um, uh, right after the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it will be the disciples, right? Uh, out of the twelve disciples, one of them committed suicide, and uh, there's only eleven and left, like the soccer team. They will be the best equipped people. Why? Because they have been with Jesus for over three years, and they've seen the miracle of God, and they've been. Uh, uh, watching all this uh, incredible uh, teaching of Jesus and they will be ready to share the gospel especially knowing and touching the hand of Jesus who is risen from the dead you know they should be ready right I mean compared to any other disciples out of the 11 disciples and you which one is more ready which one would be more effective to share the gospel by far and they will be better but then yet here uh, watch this Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said and you have heard from me uh, for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit uh, not many days from now Okay, therefore, when, uh, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, and it is not for you to know times or seasons in which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Watch this. They've been with Jesus three and a half years. 
They have seen all the miracle. They have heard all the teachings of Jesus. And on top of that, another 40 days of personal uh, lesson from Jesus about the kingdom of God. And yet, still, they are not ready. What's missing? It's the power, dunamis power of Holy Spirit. I tell you what. First time when I become a born-again Christian after the youth camp, coming back to the school, you know, I wasn't equipped at all with the Word of God because I just began to uh, read the Scripture. And yet, and that was the time that I led so many people, so many, all my friends and family to the Lord. What was that? I didn't have any theological training. I didn't have any Bible study done properly, but I had this changed life, and I was full of the Spirit of the Lord because I was praying a lot, and I just, you know, the, my friend, even before I say anything and say, what happened to you, Jason? You look different. Uh, yeah, something happened in the, uh, during the summer. So what happened? So I talk about, wow. Where's that, your church? Yeah, my church is over there. Would you like to come? I don't know whether you, yeah, I know you're smoking and you're doing this and you're doing that. Well, why don't you come? But don't, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what to uh, share with them. But they saw something in me. They saw something. He, I, I look different. I, I changed so much. My close friends, they come to church and they discover Jesus for uh, their own term, and they still walking with the Lord. And I think, sometimes we think ourselves that uh, we got to have this teaching, we got to get ready for this and that and so much of uh, things. But remember uh, that it is not the flesh giving birth. It is not your uh, persuasive talk. It is the power of the Holy Spirit uh, is the one that gives the second birth, spiritual birth, okay? Amen? So that you got to really uh, have this, uh, and then how do, we, how do we receive this power? You got to pray before you share the gospel, even in your spot moment that your, call, uh, your co-worker asking, or there's an opening, uh, uh, just like Nehemiah, quietly in his own, just uh, silent, silently, he pray to God. Okay, Lord, give me the wisdom. Give me the exact word. You can do the same. Holy Spirit, take over this time, you know, and, uh, and start the uh, conversation. And the, the Spirit, when you acknowledge the power of God and you acknowledge the uh, touch of God, and He will lead you. So here's a, uh, uh, another uh, place in the book of uh, Acts, chapter 16. Sharing gospel is the must, is the uh, 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 like uh, one of the goal of their lives, these uh, apostles and and so on, especially Apostle Paul, and he has a desire. He wanted to share the gospel in the uh, area called Asia Minor. You know, later on he actually ended up going there. But uh, verse six, and now when they had gone through uh, Perigia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit, to preach the, world, uh, the word in Asia. Okay, that's not China and Korea, that area. Uh, area. It's the, one of the region of Roman Empire, and uh, like today's Turkey. And um, why the Holy Spirit stopped them, forbid them to share the gospel? Because he's in charge. He's got his own uh, uh, strategy. He's got his own uh, uh, the timeline and so on. But Apostle Paul, you know, he wanted to personally go to Asia. And, uh, but the Holy Spirit forbidden them. You know, at least Holy, uh, Apostle Paul was sensitive to the uh, voice of the Holy Spirit. In uh, verse 7, after they had come to Messiah, uh, Messiah, and they tried to go to, into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So there's another place that the Holy Spirit is stopping. Wow, that, I thought Holy Spirit is the one who spread the gospel. But here, seemingly he's stopping Apostle Paul to share the gospel in those areas. And verse 8, uh, so passing by Messiah, they came, to, uh, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood 
and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Okay? So, there was a time that when I just uh, was so uh, uh, convicted of uh, sharing gospel every Sunday. So as a new sort of a youth pastor, after the morning service finished between the time from morning service to the evening service, and I gone to the one of the uh, park. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, its name is in Korean, it's a Falcon, Falcon Park. It's a big place. And uh, anything about Korea, you know, back in those days, there's so many people in a, a Sunday afternoon on the park. They're all sitting down together and so on. And as a young youth pastor, and no one forced me to do it. it I believe it was the, uh, just, the, just the, uh, uh, the unction of the Holy Spirit. So I stand, you know, literally the hundreds and, and, and the thousands of people, you know, small gatherings that they're sitting down eating stuff and giggling and so on. And I'm like, which one to go? I don't know which one I meant to go, right? Which one? Well, I just had a prayer. Lord, each time, you know, every Sunday afternoon, Lord, whoever whose heart is ready, I don't know which one it is. Somehow you show me. You know what? And I prayed. And each time, not every single one of them become a believer, at least, but they were, most of them were ready and more open. And, uh, and even one time that uh, the, uh, the guy was so eager to know, so we meant to pray for the prayer of accepting Jesus into his life. And the uh, moment we stopped praying and he was speaking in tongue and he was shaking, he couldn't just stand. He couldn't just uh, be still because he was in tears and saying, what is happening to me? Am I going crazy? No, it is the touch of God. You should come tonight to the church. And then he came to church and we ha- I explained more about Christianity and so on. The reason why I'm saying is that the, you have no idea out of those thousands of people which one is most ready which one that you meant to be the another uh, a stepping stone from God's point of view let the spirit of the Lord guide you you know don't use don't just uh, some people think that the Holy Spirit is there to find the car park in a, a busy shopping mall you know they pray Lord guide me Holy Spirit show me the good sh- uh, you know uh, car parks uh, 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 like a uh, place and they find and say praise the Lord and all these things I'm like Is that what you use for Holy Spirit? Why don't you just ask the Holy Spirit for something that's more meaningful and more powerful? Okay? What is the point of the Holy Spirit? Yes, he's there to comfort us and guide us and every step all the way and so on. But you know what? Don't be consumed with the what to eat and what to drink and what kind of clothes you wear. And these are the things that the pagans run after. Why don't you have some room in your heart for the things that really matter? about the kingdom business. Where is the heart of God? Heart of God is always on the people who are lost. You know, lost sheep. All they are, you know, just uh, crying and they are sitting in some other place and possibly in your uh, realm of uh, a sphere of influence. You got to ask the Lord. You, we may missing the important person that you meant to share. Because we never ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask you, show me the one that I meant to share the message of gospel. Are you with me? Would you pray this pray prayer today? It's no point that we just learn about stuff but don't apply. I believe God will give you someone that you and I meant to go and tell whatever the message you may need to share and uh, God will guide you because that is the main one of the main function of the Holy Spirit okay you know I've seen some people they just asking God asking Holy Spirit oh Holy Spirit show me show me what what should I eat for lunch I kid you not seriously and uh, it's just uh, some of the people taking you know listening to God and uh, or or just uh, relying on God in you know, as a, you know, important thing. Uh, yes, it's a great idea, but you use all these other things, but then when it comes to sharing the message of gospel, 
you've got to rely on the Holy Spirit. So he, he, here's a, a one of the scripture. And uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 11. Now when they bring you uh, to the synagogues and the magistrates and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Do you know that Holy Spirit on that spot? You got no time to prepare the message. You got no time to prepare whatever. But if you're truly relying on the Holy Spirit, and uh, He will give you the words. And how many of you had that, that sort of experience? And I had that so many experience that I was completely unprepared and somebody just opened up, you know, someone sitting next to you in an airplane or someone. So what do you do? So that's my usual line, you know, when somebody, hey, so what do you do? I'm a church pastor. Here we go again. And they were just uh, so asking questions and so on. But then there are times that are uh, just uh, words that I'm almost like a prophetic to the person. I, I don't know anything about the person next to me. But I think, you know, Spirit of the Lord knows so, so don't be afraid of, oh, well, what if I just uh, 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 making uh, uh, myself like a fool? Don't worry. Trust the Lord like a quick prayer in your heart and relying on the Holy Spirit. And he promised he will give you the words that you meant to say. And um, Acts chapter 4, verse 31, it says, When they had prayer, you know, this is after uh, uh, apostles, were beaten and uh, they were forbidden to preach in the name of Jesus but they said no we will listen to God so they gathered together as a whole church they prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all not just the apostles all the church they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they not just the apostles whole church they spoke the word of God with boldness okay that boldness the certainty that, that that the conviction the people who do not know the lord when they see that in you which is by the fullness of the holy spirit then they know that the, the power of god is with you okay I want to actually uh, close the uh, today's meeting, and I think you know many things happened today, so we carried on uh, uh, for a while. But uh, I want you to close your eyes and um, really ask the Lord that Lord, is it as someone that I'm actually missing? Is it anyone that in my sort of a circle of uh, uh, my uh, uh, circle of influence and uh, my a connection is there anyone that who is longing to hear the message of gospel and yet I didn't notice but Holy Spirit who knows the deep things of man and deep things of God are you willing to uh, be used by the Spirit of the Lord or are you just using Holy Spirit for all this miscellaneous your own whatever other uh, selfish reasons the Spirit of the Lord, His heart and His desire is for the whole nations and all the people that are lost. In your own lifestyle of comfort, we may miss the aching heart of the Father. We may miss the aching heart of the Holy Spirit that is in you. Why don't we take our time ask God, Lord, is there anyone that I need to share the message of gospel or at least invite them to the church. Don't make any excuse out of your, oh, my personality, I'm, I'm introvert or I'm this, I'm that. No, anyone can just invite someone to the Lord. But we want to be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. So I'm going to pray, ask the Lord to reveal some of the names and some of their faces to your heart. And would you be willing to share the message of gospel or just uh, some conversation about the Lord this week as the Lord may give you 
those names or those faces. All right? Let me just pray for you. Father God, we pray. We always learn and we always agree. We even saying amen. But this is the moment that Lord and we want to be obedient to you, Lord. And I believe all those who are born again believers, they have the spirit of the Lord in them. And we ask you right now, Holy Spirit, you will show us those names or those faces. It may be an uh, unexpected one. It may be someone that I'm feeling uncomfortable with. But whoever that may be, Lord, and I ask, Spirit of the Lord, that you will indicate who are those people that you want us to go and uh, share the message of gospel or to share the message of uh, some sort of testimony or the uh, invitation. Bible project or the church program and or whatever that may be. Lord and I ask the Spirit of the Lord and you would speak to us and help us to be sensitive, Lord. And also, Lord, and, and we want to be equipped with the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit and we want to be a, a strong in our so don't send us alone, but you will give us the power of the Holy Spirit. So let me just ask you, is there anyone who would like to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord this morning again for the sake of gospel, all right? Not this time for your own health and wealth and whatever the success, but this morning you want to uh, 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 fill yourself with the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can be a powerful witness in the world, so that you can be used by God. If that's you, please come to the front and I would like to pray for you to be filled with the power of God, to be filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that you can be used for the kingdom purpose. Okay? You know, what the flesh giving birth is only a flesh, but what the Holy Spirit giving birth is the, the, the things of the Spirit. So what we want to see is that the people to be born again. For that, you cannot just go there with your own experience and your own wisdom and all of your own stuff. But you got to go with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Okay. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power that is available for your mission and for your kingdom, Lord. And fill all of us with your power and with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name.